Hey, welcome to Socialism for All. Today's date is September 28, 2021. And in this video, I'm going to do some commentary on YouTube commentator Jason Unruh's feud with Caleb Maupin and the conflict that was happening there, as well as the subsequent discussion that Jason had with YouTuber and Twitch streamer Infrared. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe and consider supporting us on Patreon. There's a link to Patreon in the video description. Okay, so a number of viewers asked me for a take on this situation. And while I truly do not go out of my way, <laughs> to say the least, to get involved in undue amounts of drama, I would much prefer to focus on teaching people Marxist theory and history. I think that that's much more important. It's also true that people get some value out of commentary of mine on other YouTubers who are engaged in similar work, trying to agitate, educate, and support people in terms of learning socialism and trying to solve the political problems that the world is currently facing as a result of capitalism. So I get that. Uh, it's just not my favorite thing to do. Anyway, my position on Jason Unruh generally is he gets a lot of flack for being a third worldist and not believing that the advanced industrialized countries, capitalist imperialist nations uh, have revolutionary potential because the working class is too bought off, that the real revolutionary potential is at the true bottom of the global labor hierarchy now that capitalism has fully gone global. And I think an important point about that is that no imperialist country is just getting its wealth off of its own national domestic population. They're really getting their wealth off of, you know, a far flung global operation. So anyway, I think that's how they see it. I don't know why we're still looking at it like, you know, the national proletariat is so fucking important to them. I don't think that we are. And I think that we should stop thinking of it that way. Um, I know that Jason gets a lot of flack for that. I also know that there's a lot of people with a lot of right wing views kind of pretending to be Marxists. And some of them may even have incorporated some Marxist ideas. But to me, it's pretty shit tier in terms of the quality of the output. Uh, so long story short, I think that a lot of that criticism that Jason gets is baseless, not really Marxist and is coming from borderline fascist or fascist people who are, for whatever reason, deciding now that they are, quote, Marxist-Leninist or something to that effect. Uh, I, I don't agree with it. So, yeah, in general, I agree with Jason's positions. I know that uh, people tend to find his um, overall presentation a bit on the doomer side. I think that... Uh, yeah, I mean, I could see that, but also he is still out there doing something. I mean, I think he makes some valid points, for example, about uh, climate change is a serious threat, that it does seem somewhat difficult to imagine uh, actually making the kinds of changes required to stop climate emergency from actually making the Earth uninhabitable for humans. Uh that's a real possibility, and I know that people don't like to think about uncomfortable topics like that. But anyway, um, yeah, generally speaking, as far as his stance on imperialism, that to me seems valid and based in reality. So my understanding uh, about what happened with Jason versus Caleb Maupin, I'm kind of surprised that this split didn't happen earlier. And I think that this is part of the problem when you start trying to make personal friends with other people in a political movement, you know, particularly if they have their ties to people, funders that may be trying to influence them and you don't know about and whatever. This is politics. And um, it's one thing if you really get to know a group of people in your community pretty well and you know who everybody is and you trust them. But, you know, on YouTube, where you're dealing with media personalities who are trying to build a career and this and that, um, I don't know that the same kind of rules generally apply. So we've known for a long time that 
you know, Jason leans uh, more towards the third world side. Maupin definitely representing more of a, I, I don't even know what the, I, I've done two videos on Caleb Maupin. I'm deeply unimpressed with him. And honestly, I just don't think about him really anymore. He's blocked me on Twitter and uh, it's whatever. Really, life goes on just fine without Caleb Maupin. Um, but, you know, there's this whole patriotism discussion, which Jason, you know, rightly denounced, as most people I saw also denounced. And it's more right-leaning people who were getting behind that whole proletarian patriotism thing. So anyway, Jason uh, has a conflict with Caleb where he says, Caleb, you're lying about my positions on imperialism and saying that third worldists are good for empire and this and that and stop lying about it. Caleb wouldn't respond, whatever. So then Jason wound up having kind of a surrogate debate with uh, Infrared about it. And here's where this video comes in. Um, let me say, first of all, I watched 70 minutes of this thing, <laughs> this spectacle. I thought Jason made excellent points. I really didn't disagree with him on substance at any point. And I thought that the infrared guy was just being a jerk and making kind of little, you know, borderline clever quips, just trying to be like entertaining to his audience. But no learning was happening in this conversation at all. And in fact, some of the points that the infrared guy did make were just ridiculously stupid. And credit to Jason for calling that out. Also, if you watch the comments scrolling on the side of the screen, they're basically awful. So this whole like tough guy act that infrared is into, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's comical, honestly. So that's my basic take, is that debate bro culture just needs to fucking die. That's the basic final analysis here, is just please stop being a debate bro, stop supporting debate bros, stop watching debate bros. It isn't good for anyone. It doesn't encourage learning. It doesn't encourage synthesis of ideas. It encourages stubbornness. It encourages bullheadedness. It encourages dishonesty. It encourages disingenuity. It just really brings out the worst in people. It encourages people to be their worst selves, to not listen to other people, and to just try to dunk on each other, whether they're right or wrong. That's bullshit. <laughs> I mean, that is not good for a movement. It's unhealthy. It's disruptive. It's just harmful. You know, and the amount of ego that gets poured into these things, too. That's not what we should be about as socialists, is trying to one-up each other. So here's the infrared guy on Twitter. And clearly he has studied the blade. So that's braggable. Um, but his bio is the undefeated. After watching the thing with Jason, you might want to change that, honestly. Because this was a... This guy just came away looking ineffectual at best. I mean, just kind of a joke, to be honest. I don't know what anyone uh, rooting for this guy gained out of watching this conversation because he was just disingenuously trying to uh, twist Jason's words. And it was solely for the purpose of putting on a performance for his audience, not in the spirit of actual learning. It's not supportive at all. Um, so he also tweets, reminder, and this is just from a few days ago, September 24th, reminder that I've never lost a single debate. Um, well, you definitely didn't do so well in that one. I mean, I don't believe in the debating format in the first place. Uh, I think it's a stupid waste of everyone's time. But when you try to reduce the learning process, to and I'm a huge believer in, in you know learning from other people and conversation. I think getting into a deep conversation with somebody uh, safely, you know, where you actually trust them and they're not trying to pull fucking mind games on you, that can be a, a great way to learn other people's points of view, 
and to consider them and to just come to an understanding of, you know, experience beyond your skin. That's a really great thing. I'm a big believer in that. But trying to reduce conversation to an I won, you lost type of game scenario, to me betrays a massive insecurity about your positions, your beliefs, your views, and just the very act of communicating with another person. It goes on. Every debate they say I've lost. Who's the they? Who's the they? Just any critic? It's them. Get them. Anyway, every debate they say I've lost is narrative spinning. You should have a hyphen there. Narrative spinning copium. Come on. This is so childish. Narrative spinning copium based on speculation. What? What? Unsupported by the substantive content of the debate itself. Well, certainly doesn't sound like you're mad at all. Okay. So if you look down into the comments, someone asks near the bottom there, is it possible to ever pick a debate winner without spinning a narrative to some extent? Which, yeah, I mean, people have their idea. They look at what happened. They tell a story about what happened. So... The response, the official response, I'll zoom in, was all you can do is weigh the substantive points from each side and the willingness of each side to confront or address said points. Okay, so we have now the standard. And this isn't way in the past. This is just a few days ago from when I'm making this video. And this is basically at the same time that the uh, conversation with Jason happened. And I think that that's then a fair standard to apply to this conversation. Let's now watch some of this. I watched 70 minutes of it. It's two hours long. I don't know how much of this we're going to get through. I'll start playing it. And if there seems like a logical conclusion point, we'll just end it there. Uh, because I definitely had enough of it before the end uh, when I was watching it previously. And in fact, there is a point, I think about 50 minutes in, when Jason's just like, you're done, you're done. Like, he had just said something that was so absurd that you couldn't go on anymore. And it's true. I mean, it was just, it, it flew in the face of everything anybody has ever said or known about Marxism. So let's get into the video. Buckle up. Hello? Yes. Hey, uh, do you want to come up? Based. Yeah. Uh, fuck, wrong button. All right. All right. Um, hold on. Let me pop this out. Let me get this Discord. Oh, shit. Actually, better take a shot of this first. For sure. All right, uh, here. Okay. Um, sorry, give me a sec. All right, what's up? Okay, so I don't know what all the settings on Twitch are necessarily, but you already have a huge amount of visual bias going on in this setup because Jason is about one eighth the size of the camera on infrared. So, who by the way, let's look at the name for a second. You have Jason's name and then Sultan Haas the Cruel. Come on, what is this? You know, I, I don't want to hear this guy ever accuse anyone of LARPing ever because what is that? I, I think if I got into a conversation with somebody who referred to themselves in that way, clearly, kind of seriously, as part of this debate bro persona, I mean, it's a joke. What are you going to get out of it? So why people take people like this seriously is, I think, they also are not serious people. Proceeding. Thanks, sir. 
Are we on right now? Yeah, we're on right now. Okay, good, good. So do you want me to just basically run down what happened? Uh, yeah, yeah, the floor is yours. So what's on the wrists here real quick? Um, looks like Infrared just got back from filming a Too Fast for Love era Motley Crue music video. Um, that's super bizarre. Again, this whole persona, this... There's just something about this that's so warped. You know, I had viewers of S4A messaging me like, Oh, have you seen Infrared? Whatever. My exposure to this was I listened for about five minutes to an early stream. I was deeply unimpressed with the sort of thuggish bullying persona. Uh, I think I checked back in a few months later and I saw... I don't know. It, it just looks like fascism to me, basically. Um, and we'll get into that because the amount of right-wing talking points that get brought up by Infrared during this discussion. You know, there's, there's a point for me to doing the audiobooks that I do on my channel so people can actually get educated in Marxism and, you know, all the developments of Marxism that have been initiated since Marx's day. Because when you know what that is, you're less likely to fall for fascists posing as Marxists. Um, so yeah, it's just this whole persona. I, 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 I don't even, it's depressing to me that this is as popular as it is, I guess. And, but it just goes to show this whole debate bro thing. It, it's a huge world. It tends to attract people of a like mind loud-mouthed and competitive. Um, I just don't know that this necessarily really has any intersection with socialism per se. There are far better ways, like I said, to do your learning. Um, anyway, I'm, j I'm honestly dying inside just putting this on the channel. Again, people did request it, and this was, it seemed to me like, the best opportunity to do so. But... Anyway, there are definitely things I would rather be doing <laughs> with channel time right now. Continuing. Okay, so basically Caleb Moffin put out a tweet earlier saying that third world is support imperialism. Well, that's an outright lie. The, the entire cornerstone of everything that we are is anti-imperialism. Putting anti-imperialism before everything else. Um... So, Okay, so we went from you have the floor to interrupting after the third sentence. Already off to a very bad start. I mean, whether or not you want to agree with the ideology or not, to say that we support imperialism is a falsehood. Um, so, uh, I, I didn't see Caleb's tweet, but hold on, give me a second. I gotta tweet something on my desk. Okay, sign number two that somebody is not taking the conversation very seriously is after interrupting you after giving you the floor, they suddenly say, I need to clean something on the desk and walking away from the live stream. Sorry about that. All right. So I I didn't see his tweet specifically, but I think as materialists, we do have to distinguish what an ideologist says their ideology is and the real content of uh, what they're saying at the level of the practical implications, the material implica implications. And the material implications are not about uh, what it would mean for their ideas to be uh, realized on the terms of the ideas, but what it would mean for their ideas to be realized um, in actual reality. Okay, so I get the point that he just made. For example, libertarians say that they're for freedom, but in reality, libertarian policies would result in virtually zero rights for working people, massive economic insecurity, 
and uh, an actual reduction of any sense of freedom whatsoever, for starters. Although I think that some of the way that that was phrased was the, I didn't really get the end about not in the terms of the ideas. Anyway, so yeah, you want to look at the implications of an idea. Fine. I still don't know, you know, what exactly the problem would be, but okay, let's go with it. Like, which isn't something that can be controlled by the ideas themselves, if that makes sense. Like, for example, no, one I, can I, say no, uh, that they are an anti-imperialist, but because of the specific way they're positioning themselves in relation to real existing imperialism, they can end up serving imperialism. Okay, so how is it you think I'm serving imperialism? In my view, correct question by Jason. Um... So, I don't know specifically how you are doing it, but... Okay, what? <laughs> so, we've had a number of stalling tactics here. Uh, the cleaning the table, the drinking from the bottle, the long swig. And then when asked point blank, well, how? It, you know, this accusation has been made. Third worldists actually support imperialism, when in fact the whole idea is to undercut the material foundation of imperialism, which is the exploitation and plunder of developing countries. How does taking that position actually help empire? And the answer is... Just for the hypothetical's sake, um, I would say that if you're addressing an audience and basically telling them that they have to hate America and oppose... Wait, what? You just, you were asked a question about how does third worldism help empire and you just start talking about hating america that wasn't what was asked and if this is about to go to the place of you're making leftists look bad because we look like outcasts in american society or something like that you know let's take a very obvious example anything the democratic party which is obviously imperialist pro-war owned by the same one percent that owns the republican party the republicans call them like Maoists, no matter what they do. So you're never going to win that fight. Let's be clear. It's like Colin Kaepernick taking a knee was, you know, he hates this country, blah, blah, blah. As soon as you go down that whole toxic slide, which just goes towards oblivion, you've already lost. So don't even go down the whole road of, you know, hating America or whatever. It's about having a sensible, eyes open perception of what, how empire works. It's based in North America and Europe, and it exploits the developing world. Therefore, that's how the system works. And make your conclusions from there if you want to change it. But already, this is getting off track. Those America and patriotism and things like that. They don't the have to hate America. It'd be beneficial, but they don't necessarily have to. Well, but for, that, the, sake of, but, but for the sake of argument, let's say you have to. Yeah, well, that, I mean, that's like a consequence of Marxism or Marxism-Leninism. The net effect is the support of imperialism because you're basically nullifying their ability to pose a threat to American imperialism whatsoever. So this guy has a following why. He just stated that like it's some truism, just self-evident. What? How? I... <laughs> Pointing out how empire works nullifies your ability to oppose it. No, it's actually the starting point of being able to effectively oppose it because you understand how it works. You can see where the resources are flowing. You can see where the military force is being deployed and by whom. That's literally the starting point of being able to effectively oppose empire. And if you try to skip that step, you end up a fascist because you get all tangled with bourgeois nationalism. So it's about separating yourself from all those bourgeois illusions that are put upon us and not trying to take them at face value. Like I said before, it's like, you know, the Republicans have such a uh, stranglehold over their base because it's like, 
Democrats are communists who are going to murder your children in your sleep and they're going to take your house away and blah, 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 put you in a re-education camp. And nobody says like, well, they're not actually. <laughs> like, it's just taken at face value. Uh, you, you just, you can't win a debate that irrational. Like bourgeois nationalism, it isn't in the proletariat self-interest to get involved in that. And so again, this guy had just stated that pointing out how empire works nullifies the ability of people to oppose it. That's nonsense. Logically, that's totally the opposite conclusion that you should reach. And people's emotions about the U.S. or any cooperating imperialist country about their imperialist behavior is, like Jason said, they don't have to hate it. Maybe it's beneficial, and I don't know why, because they get more passionate about it or something. But that's not the problem here. People seeing how empire works and getting upset about it literally isn't the problem. It's people looking at it or, and not getting upset about it or people not looking at it and then also attacking people who have looked at it. So this conversation so far is off on a really bizarre starting note. Exactly how is being against America and hating America supporting American imperialism? Well, because you're making it impossible in that way for people to practically oppose the real existing reality of American imperialism, not the one and in And how does that happen? Well, it, it happens because the only way to defeat American imperialism, as far as Americans are concerned, is to win the American masses. Uh, I don't know what exactly he is using American masses as a buzzword for, but plenty of people in the U.S. don't like U.S. empire already. Uh, actually, the further, you know, this whole thing on patriotism, I did a video on this recently. If you're a Republican, you're about 70% likely to say that you're patriotic. As you go to moderates, independents, Democrats, and then lib like just liberals not affiliated with Democrats, that number gets as low as like the mid-20s. So people are far more likely than not to say that they're patriotic or supportive of America. So this whole idea that patriotism is this like sacred cow that needs to be just treated with the utmost sort of kid gloves. It's really bizarre. It's not based in reality. And the people you're most likely to attract with such a strategy are people who are completely wrapped up in bourgeois ideology and are committed opponents of socialism. This is why I keep saying you end up with a fascist movement if you try to work with this bourgeois national element. So this whole thing of like, if you point out empire and people hate America, then you're undermining their real ability to stop imperialism. That's a tortured argument. Uh, and he's not really explaining it. This is why Jason is repeatedly saying, how, how? Because he's not explaining it. And that's a really bad debate tactic. It's a manipulation tactic where you try to let the person you're trying to confuse or manipulate fill in the gaps for you. In other words, he doesn't have an argument. And so he's having Jason try to come up with stuff. Thankfully, Jason is mostly not taking the bait here. Um, but already there's like nothing to this discussion. So... He's just making assertions that the American masses need to love America in order to stop empire. America is an empire. It's really never been anything but. I mean, it started as a colony and then it became an empire. It literally took over for the empire which created it as a colony. That's America. It's not like many other countries. It's a fairly unique situation in that regard. Like Canada, well, Canada is still part of the British Commonwealth. So even that, you know, it's, it's not quite the same or Australia is in the same boat uh, as Canada. So yeah, that doesn't follow at all. 
so we can't really accept that as a proposition to the extent that it's even clear in the first place and possibly this will be clarified but already just shady uh and unclear tactics here in having this disagreement not necessarily you well, could for for the most part i mean even if you did hate america yeah that would be one way to do it anti-war activism and pr pretty much during the vietnam war there was burning the american flag yeah but there that was, was not an effective deal. way of um that the, the vietnam war was prolonged for so so many years even at the expense of the anti-war movement and part of that was because the anti-war movement wasn't drawing from the material basis of american statehood which okay what what was that phrase you just used? Because that meant nothing. And I think that that was intended to just dazzle your base. I haven't heard like an ounce of substance so far. Nothing. Um, the material basis of the American state? What the fuck are you talking about? Seriously. All right, so going back, and really, for anyone in the audience who thinks he said something there, he didn't. <laughs> I mean, he didn't. Uh, that that was just a phrase. It, Vosh does the exact same thing. Vosh comes up with these flowery phrases to try to dazzle the audience who think that he might, you know, well, that was a complicated phrase. He might know what he's talking about. Yeah, there's there, that was completely empty. Um, as for Jason's point that you don't necessarily need the U.S. masses to end U.S. imperialism. Uh, or U.S.-led imperialism. It's a global system. For example, uh, the rest of the world, you know, let's say there were successful socialist revolutions in various other countries, and they decided to invade the U.S. That would be one way of ending it without ever getting a temperature check on what people living in the U.S. think about it. So that would be one way. Um... But yeah, again, when people start saying the American masses are like the U.S. masses or the U.S. working class, you got to be careful that this isn't a buzzword or euphemism for white working class men. Because we do know from the demographic, we just did a video on this recently, white working class men are the only subset of the poor that really votes Republican, like is the most reactionary in large numbers, the most committed anti-socialists are white working class men, and that comes from decades of right-wing messaging, Rush Limbaugh, all that shit. And the Republican Party was particularly effective in stoking massive organized campaigns of racism that helped split the working class. This is an example. Uh, the Democratic Party, of course, for their part, uh, being anti-socialist as well, could not mount an effective resistance to that. Uh, you know, after McCarthyism, the U.S. left was crushed and really to this day has not recovered. So the Democratic Party was left with its sort of weakest elements. And here we are today. Yeah. So yeah, just this whole conversation is sort of giving me a headache. Let's see if this gets anywhere more productive. Would eventually become the kind of Reagan uh, Democrats the kind of working class that supported Nixon and later Reagan. If you could what, tap into those Nixon. people. And so this is what it always comes down to. If you could tap into those people, you know, the people who are our most committed enemies. If you could tap into them somehow, you know, this is like going back to Nazi Germany. It's like if we could just get the SS on our side, if we could just, you know, uh, you have to fight fascism at some point. You cannot just, you know, look, I get it. Uh, things don't look great. The U.S. is very right wing. And I can understand the inclination to want to say, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. It's fucking delusional, though, to think, you know, this is like uh, pulling Biden left. You're not going to pull him left. You're going to they're, they're going to pull you right. It's the same thing with this like, hmm, let's just turn Reaganites into communists. Oh, gee, why didn't I think of that? Let me wave the magic wand. Poof. All of you with fascist inclinations are now communists. So how does that happen? This is magical thinking. It's just delusional. I, I don't know what else to say. At best, it's deluded. 
And, you know, at worst, this is a brazen deception and part of a larger project to build a fascist movement in the United States, which I seriously suspect the latter in this case, because it is just coming out of so many media outlets right now at every level to build this right populist anti-imperialist, quote unquote. It's never going to be anti-imperialist for reasons that Jason is going to get into, because the U.S., is empire there's nothing else to support about it it's never been anything else i mean you have to be so fucking ignorant to think you, go watch republican party political ads uh here i'm gonna put one in the video right now watch it you think these people are gonna become communists you're a fucking idiot killed my grandfather in front of his own children. Communists burn my family home to ashes. Communists hunted us, starved us, murdered us. Communists wanted my family dead because we did not believe in their evil ideology. We fled in a boat to America because the communists destroyed our home. America was a safe harbor. Now Democrats are bringing communism here to America. Communists want to destroy your home, the last free country on earth. Please listen to me. I speak from experience. America must never become a communist country. The vessel for communism in America is the Democrat party. We must stop them. My name is Amy Fan West, and I'm running against the Communist Squad and Katie Porter in California's 45th District. When my family fled communism in Vietnam, we landed in America, right here in Orange County. We found safety here, dignity here, freedom here, and we immigrated legally. This is our home now, and I will not let communists destroy our home. I am fighting to ensure this nation remains the land of the free, and that means communist free. This is the reason why I'm running for Congress. Democrats have embraced communism. Their policies are beginning to resemble what I saw in Vietnam. Right now in America, you are seeing the first stages of a communist takeover, the banning of speech, limiting of freedoms, destruction of private property, crushing of small businesses, defunding our police, spying on our own citizens and the daily use of fear and intimidation to attack people they disagree with. I am a woman immigrant wife and mother the lives of my children matter i will make sure that this country is safe free and strong for my children's future i know what it is like to be a child and have my future destroyed by communists it can happen in an instant if it happens here in america there is nowhere else to go for us and for our children America is the refuge, the beacon of freedom for the world. We must be students of history. We are standing up to this fight for what is right. Elect me, Amy Fan West, and I will make sure America will never become a communist or socialist country. So this is what MAGA has now become. You cannot reason with this. You simply cannot reason with this. The people clinging to this are so far gone. It's unbelievable to me as somebody who, you know, values sanity, rationality, having some kind of grip on my emotions and intellect. They have embraced a level I mean, they've just abandoned critical thinking entirely. It's totally just going on 
just a chain reaction of fear-based thoughts. That's all it is going on in there. Poor substitute for a brain. So that's what we're up against. You think you're going to out-patriotism these people? You think you're going to win them over? At some point, you just have to say, oh, well, they're fascists and stop trying to think about converting them and start thinking about fighting them because I just look at it. All right. I'm so fed up with this entire situation, but it clearly needs to be said. Um, going on with the video. And um, accentuate the contradiction between them and the American deep state and military industrial complex, which does exist. Okay. Uh, no one should be using the term deep state on the left. This is not the same thing when we say that we are anti-imperialist. This is something that fascists do when they come to power to cleanse out elements that are unsympathetic to their particular fascist putsch. It's basically a very amorphous term that, you know, well, you look at uh, Trump, for example, who put this out there in the first place. They just used that term. They branded anyone deep state who just wasn't particularly on board with the particular project of Trump and just Trumpism. Obviously, the U.S. empire had existed for a long time before that. The CIA, the OSS, like there's all these lineages of what we would today call the military industrial complex. It is not the deep state. Again, this is something fascists do when they come to power and they try to purge those overall apparatuses of people not sympathetic to them. You want to talk about imperialism? Great, so do I. But buying into that deep state rhetoric, I mean, it's basically like a stone's throw from like, we're rooting out the Jewish conspirators that have infiltrated our, uh, you know, ranks of our fine patriotic military. That's basically what this has more in common with than we need to uproot empire different conversations. The sort of right conspiracy theorist view is that the system overall is basically okay. America is overall basically okay. And we just need to root out the conspiratorial elements within it, which are trying to undermine it and give it a bad name and do bad things. That's fascist reasoning. So back to the video. You would be opposing imperialism more effectively than any kind of sloganeering or burning or symbolic gestures could possibly. An example of this is the fact that whether we like it or not, I mean, this is not our preferred, it's not preferable to us, but let's look at the past 20 years. The okay, most somebody, effective I, I just, threat. I just, I just want to get something yeah. straight. You're going to fight the military industrial complex by loving your country yeah when that is what it is yeah that <laughs> jason is spot on right there that's exactly what i was just saying there is no other united states than that the united states from its inception they were colonies of europeans who came over and genocided the people who were already living here and then in a massive land grab they started making lots of money off of this new land and they killed anyone who would get in their way and they brought over free slave labor from Africa. Millions of people were brought over to work for free and to be treated as property. This is the only United States that ever existed. And that's a fact. The United States was created not very long ago, about 250 years ago, not long ago at all. And of course, it existed as colonies prior to that. So what else are you trying to tap into? This is just, again, it's at best ignorance of U.S. history. At best, it's ignorance. Because if you know anything about U.S. history and the Klan and everything else about U.S. policing and, I mean, just the entire thing, militias, the whole thing is designed for white people to be using violence to keep down the black and brown populations that are indigenous to the land or were brought over as slaves. The entire thing 
is about domination by European settlers of people of non-European origins. That's the whole thing. And it's done for profit. And this was the next stage. I mean, capitalism was an explosive force in Europe. And of course, you know, mercantilism before that as capitalism was getting going. But the colonies were a huge part of this project. And the wealth that was created during those years formed the basis of the giant financial trusts that exist today and the insurance companies. Where do you think all that money came from? So it came from all that plunder in those early years. That's where it came from. And as far as the U.S. working class, there's, I mean, the entire thing was about using the white working class. uh, I mean, the proletariat as such didn't exist in those days, but the working classes, such as they were, were always enlisted in the task of helping to oppress the black and brown populations. So... I just, it's amazing ignorance, or if it's not ignorance, I mean, there's just nothing else to talk about, basically. If it's not ignorance, it's deception and fraud. So which is it? Are you just ignorant, or are you trying to deceive your audience? Also, again, just this thing of, oh, if you can tap into that, tap into it. What the fuck are you talking about? You tap into that, you're just going to get like a flow of bile and pus coming out. There's nothing there. There's nothing socialist in that. There's nothing there at all. This is pure wishful thinking. That's all it is. Again, if you know anything about U.S. history and just the decade after decade, century after century programming of the colonial settler mindset, I mean, you want a more pronounced modern example, go look at interviews of Israelis and the way that they're taught to hate and to think about the Palestinians. Because it's the same fucking thing here. People who think like this just can't look in the mirror and see it in themselves. It's exactly the same uh, in terms of that taught, you know, enlisting everyone in the population to suppress the people who you're genociding. And there's nothing else to it. Continuing. No, this is an undialectical view because... No, no. America was born of slavery, racism, genocide, and land theft. Uh, So that's correct. Three points. First of all, that's correct. Second of all, that's an undialectical viewpoint. Fuck you. You know, you see people throwing this around and they've taught their followers to say shit like this too when they get into a tight spot in an argument. Uh, I had somebody tell me, learn dialectics, man. You got to be a dialectician. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You just heard some streamer say that. Go fuck yourself, you ignorant fucking piece of shit. Third point is you think that people who can't uh, be asked to have hard feelings towards a country which has committed genocide and slavery and segregation and ongoing systemic racism and violence against almost every fucking country on the planet in one form or another, military or economic or whatever, diplomatic, you think that people who are going to be challenged by being asked to maybe, you know, consider all that shit like evil, like a gross moral violation of, you know, things we as humans should not do to each other, that we shouldn't basically prey on each other. Because after all, when we're talking about socialism, we're trying to make a system in which people aren't exploiting each other anymore. We're trying to make a system where there is peace by expropriating the expropriators. We are trying to make a system in which people are treated fairly because we have removed the contradictions inherent in capitalism and all of the previous stages of class struggle. So, but you think that people who can't be asked to have a hard feeling about America are somehow going to get into being anti-imperialist. What possible motivation would they have for becoming anti-imperialist if they're not even ready to consider that empire is doing evil shit like why would they not just continue to support it and benefit from it which they absolutely are benefiting from it you can ask any right winger would you rather live in the u.s or mexico 
And they'll tell you flat out, I'd rather live in the U.S. because those people in Mexico, you know, they have horrible lives and it's a, quote, shithole country and all that stuff. So I would call that recognition of the privilege of you living in the U.S. They attribute it to the wrong things, uh, although some of them attribute it to the right things because there's a ton of people who used to be in the military. And, you know, there's a lot of people who are in the U.S. military and commit atrocities on behalf of the U.S. military. And then they come out of it radicalized. I mean, those who aren't killed, maimed, or psychologically so traumatized that they're never going to be able to function again. But there are some people who come out of it, uh, like Iraq vets against the war, for example, um, you know, who do come out of it radicalized against it. But plenty of others are just like, yeah, go U.S. military. I'd do it again. And, uh, you know, the, fuck those hippies who like, you know, say that we're bad for supporting empire. Sure, I might have shot 40 children in the head and burned a village to the ground. But uh, fuck those hippies. They're the real problem. You think you're going to harness that? I would really like to hear where exactly you think those people's anti-imperialist sentiment is coming from when they have declared themselves allies of empire. I'll wait. All of those things are what made America what it is. Without those things, America does not exist. But those things preceded America. No, those are the basis for America. But those preceded the American state by okay, centuries. They are the basis of America. You're saying slavery existed before America? Well, if it, it was the basis of America, time? if it was the basis of the United States, why was a war in need of being waged to give rise to the United States? Are you for real? I'm sorry, this guy has a lot of followers somehow? That is the dumbest shit ever. You just asked why was the U.S. Revolutionary War fought? Do you know anything? Anything. You're a Marxist and you're confused on this issue. Yeah, I don't think so. So the U.S. capitalists decided that they could get a lot richer and just have a country run by rich people rather than the monarchy. And they felt like with the ocean between them and the governing colonial power, they stood a chance at having an armed rebellion. And uh, why pay tribute to a country which is ruling you when you could keep it all yourself? Uh, so there was a bourgeois revolution. It was anti-feudal. It was anti-monarchist. And they created a bourgeois republic to be governed and enjoyed by rich people and everybody else could just contribute to their wealth. What's not clear about that? Like, obviously, there was a chain of events that preceded that. Like, they had to build the colonies. And, you know, people in the U.S., the capitalists in the U.S., had to acquire enough wealth first in order to mount that rebellion. But where do you think they got it from? The sky? Seriously, what the fuck was that question? Because it was a concept of the bourgeois ideas of property ownership over the remaining feudal notions that were still held by the uh, by the British uh, territories. For, for example, like what do you mean as an example? Okay, for exa so my mouth is just hanging agape right now because I can't tell if this is just debate broism, like he's stalling Jason with obvious like questions that any Marxist, really any basic historian, even like bourgeois historian, um, with a high school education would know the answer to this question. So it's possible he's just stalling him or trying to frustrate him with like some debate bro moves here. But seriously, you don't know the answer to that question? You, 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 to the point where you're challenging Jason for an example of it? It's the entire constitution. We the people and all that stuff. Maybe you've heard of it before. This is crazy. Um... Again, I, I can't tell if this is a manipulation tactic or just sheer ignorance, but it's pretty fucking stupid either way. Uh, you say on Constitution about property and all of that, and the removal of religion from the government. Those are all anti-feudal notions. Before that, many of the feudal notions were you had to be born into aristocracy to own any significant amount of land. You had to be born into aristocracy to do business, etc. The whole point of the Constitution was literally, was, without saying it, but if you look at the substance of it, it's pro-capitalism. But the, the English Civil War had already overturned the, um, the feudal order proper. 
So this is one of the apparent leading voices of Marxism on social media. That's a joke. This, uh, this guy's oblivious. He just, he thinks feudalism was completely over. But I just, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Because, you know, I, I didn't know if he was debate broing, stalling, trying to mess with him. This sounds like actual ignorance. Wow. Dude, if you don't know stuff like this, please stop talking. Seriously. Both in England and... Th For the most part. So I, I don't see Still, how that... That's what, that's what the Constitution is, is literally a pro-capitalist document. But the... Even, America was even, never... Even, America was never feudal proper. It was always um, determined by... No, I know. Yeoman who came from Europe and, you know, owned small plots. I'm not and they became, it was. Yeah, there was no serfs and there was no things like I, I that. I never said there was. Yeah. The point of the Constitution is the opposite of that. Yeah, so for clarity's sake, which... Again, this should be readily obvious to everyone, but like seriously, especially in a Marxist context, that those historical processes had been underway for a while. I mean, England was one of the first places where capitalism came up in the entire world. So that process, I mean, the colonies being in large part, you know, heavily influenced by England, uh, those processes had been underway for a while. And the colonies were a product of England's development in that way and decisions that it made about acquiring more wealth, etc. But the United States, you know, capitalism had been developing and developing. And then it came time, the U.S. capitalists felt, to formally declare this is our new system. These are its founding documents. And to draw a clear line that any vestiges, exactly like Jason said, that are still you know, trailing along, we're trying to, with the founding of this new country, sever all of those. Now, obviously, huge remnants did remain in terms of the institution of religion and marriage and family relations and things like that, still all basically feudal, um, to take an example. But yeah, property relations, they were, it was more of a market break. So I just don't understand the point here Otherwise, like trying to seek clarification on that. Where is this going? That was not formalized until there was the Constitution. I mean, even then, you can't say there is an America without land theft. Okay. You had to kill off the natives and take their land. But that was something that, again, was not essential to the founding of the United States uh, or the Republic. Yes, it physically could not exist without it. Yeah, so Jason is, again, completely right on that point. Uh, there's no arguing that, and in fact, there is no argument made. I feel like kind of the discussion should be over at this point, or at least should go in a different direction. What we're actually going to see is the discussion start to deteriorate into just more and more buffoonery and clownery, because there really is nothing, you can't argue these points. These are solid facts they're incontestable they're not up for debate so what do you do when you're trying to put on a show for your debate bro loving crowd well you got to do something and i think that that's you know it's round about this point that things start going really downhill in terms of any of this being coherent but to me that's a pretty clear line in the sand right here like where would you have put the republic there are already people living there uh, and they're not part of your republic, nor does your racial ideology really recognize them as any kind of equals. They, I mean, also point of fact, live a completely different way of life. So they don't want your system necessarily. Like they have their own ways of doing things. It's, uh, it's a real clash. And, you know, you could say that certain sections of the population, perhaps being super charitable here, that there may have been one or two groups that came over solely seeking refuge for their religious views, and they weren't trying to oppress or dominate anybody. And they, you know, approached the indigenous people on their hands and knees and said, please, we come from a far off land. And, uh, you know, we we're escaping a cruel and evil king who is oppressing us because of our beliefs. 
may we seek refuge in this, your home. And then the people living there could have said yes or no, get back on your boat and go somewhere else. That could have happened. What actually happened was domination, oppression, violence, and the, a, a new government, which was set up for the purpose. I mean, it was run by capitalists. Capitalists want one thing, profit. They wanted to expand their operations more and more and more. This is where Manifest Destiny comes in, which says that, you know, it's God's will for the colonists to spread all the way across to the other coast and just basically take everything, you know. The colonists got really used to treating people as property or just as something in the way to be discarded when it got in the way of this project. So that's just called knowing the history of this country. People who don't like that tend to start attacking the messenger and saying, well, you hate America. Well, are you sure you're not just projecting wildly because what I just told you made you uncomfortable about this country that you've said the Pledge of Allegiance to thousands of times? Could it just be that those are actually your own feelings, that you don't know how you feel about this country anymore? But why are we supposed to like take that projection at face value rather than just digging in and saying, well, look, you know, we're adults here and we got to deal with the reality of the place that we're living in rather than trying to spin it into all these other ways, which just wastes everybody's time and is an insult and an affront to all the people who have been crushed by the United States. So, yeah, continuing. No, but you're not listening to what I'm saying is that that was happening anyway. That was going to happen regardless Are of whether they were literally there was going trying to separate native genocide and land theft from America. No, I argued uh, a week ago that without slavery, there would be no United States. So I agree with that. Am I the only one who thinks that this is pointless? Like, if he agrees with this stuff, why are you like putting up such a fight about it? Do you know how to agree with people? I, this is so bizarre. So I don't even. It's so twisted. Uh, anyway, where does... I, I'm just really scratching my head here as to... Th this is not normal things people do in a discussion. So you agree there would be no United States without slavery, but you're fighting on the point that these things are the basis of the United States? What are you talking about? What I'm trying to okay. say is that... So that wouldn't have know, it just seems like it just agreed with but me. the u.s was not the decisive factor in determining whether there was going to be those things is what i'm trying to say those things existed before and would have existed anyway so this is a non-point in terms of having any bearing on this discussion at all so yes fact slavery did exist prior to the foundation of the united states per se however the U.S. did not abolish it as part of that founding process, that would have been the opportunity to say, this is an anti-slavery country. It did not do that. That was, again, the time, the critical moment there. It, in fact, did affirmatively say that black people would count as three-fifths of a white person. So that's what it had to say on the matter. And in fact, if you know anything about U.S. history, you know that the continuous acquiescence to the southern slaveholding powers was a constant problem. I mean, there were people who were opposed to it, who were abolitionists, and it was like a hundred years after the founding of the U.S. that they managed to achieve that result. Um, there was a huge problem in U.S. history for quite a long time after the founding of the U.S. But how, like, what are we even talking about at this point? I just don't understand. It's like he's trying to confuse all of these issues with so much minutia that we forget what even the point is. Um, it's so bizarre. Anyway, I, I, I don't even know what we're jumping into next, but let's go to it.
you're saying there would have been an America even if the land theft wouldn't have happened. No, I'm not saying happen. that. I'm saying and there would have been saying? land theft and there would have been slavery even if there was no republic. Uh, okay, so again, two things here. One, when the republic was founded, they had an opportunity to come out against and abolish those things. They did not. Therefore, they condoned slavery. Therefore, the foundations of the U.S., include slavery that was part of the system it was known and accepted this wasn't something going on in secret it was part of the system it was acknowledged it was accepted so it didn't abolish it therefore it was a pro-slavery country yeah second let's say that the united states uh you know the capitalists george washington and all them they lost the rebellion and the U.S. remained part of the British Commonwealth, you know, ending up more like Australia or Canada, etc. Uh, so what? I mean, in, in as far as communists being anti-imperialist and opposing a system and not being patriotic towards a system which had, you know, always condoned slavery and land theft and all these things, we would be against that too. So I don't really see how this is at all relevant. And to be honest, if this is the way the guy argues, again, this is like the third video clip at all I've watched of this. Is this like a regular thing? Because I see grasping at straws. I, I see desperation here. These points don't add up to anything. So I, there's just no substance. So the fact that they are there. So and what, in what way did the Republic the make a difference is the question. So he just said that's the question. It's really not, though. I mean, why would that be the question? It makes no sense. The guy's talking nonsense. It makes no sense. We, we've just covered this from multiple angles now. It, <laughs> it makes no sense. I mean, that's all I can really come up with is like, why would you say that? It makes no sense. So... Again, uh, he wants to know, how did the Republic make a difference? Well, it condoned slavery for a hundred years, for starters. Um, and even if the Republic hadn't been founded, we would still be opposed to the same system, which definitely would have become the same thing anyway, because of the needs of imperialism. You know, after the European imperialists got done tearing each other to shreds in World War I and World War II, the U.S. was the only capitalist major, you know, allied power that wasn't um, destroyed, bombed out, and, you know, had a highly trained workforce and tons of raw materials and, you know, advanced industry and all that stuff. So, it, and that's, that's just geographical, you know, that, that it, that's why it didn't end up all bombed out and everything, because trying to mount an assault on the U.S. would have been basically impossible. It's way too big, and anyone would have lost that fight. So it would have wound up doing what it's doing today, which is really the relevant question, whether it was under you know, British control or independent, because we're trying to think in terms of the development of capitalism and the needs of capitalists, to have this white knight in reserve, which was the United States. And that's exactly what it was, you know, destined to be, being that it emerged as this early bourgeois republic. I don't really get at all where anyone would be coming from and saying, how did the, make, the republic make a difference in that? I mean, it didn't make a difference in what came before it because time flows forwards, not backwards. I don't even know why you would ask that. But it, it's what happened. So it's the thing that we live in now. It's the thing that happened then. What is your point? Continuing. Maybe, maybe we'll find out, but I'm really scratching my head on this one. And maybe I'm just being too charitable. But seriously, that made no sense. Well, literally the U.S. Army slaughtered Native Americans. Did the British not do that? They're both capitalists. They both did it were opposed to both. I mean, if you know anything about the actual movements today, 
People are not super high on the British either. They also, you know, ran the British Empire, responsible for more than a little bit of oppression as well. Colonialism. Like, is he just out of ideas and just saying shit at this point? Because it seems like that to me. I can't seem to, like, grasp a thread of, like, reason in what he's saying. Again, I... What is the point of that? So the U.S. did it and the British did it. We're opposed to that because we're communists. And I, what the fuck? Anyway, more video. Particularly the U.S. cavalry. Did the British not do that? And? Yeah. And would be the correct response. So, Jason, good job again. Let's remember that the original topic here, which we are like light years away from at this point, is do third worldists, I mean, which would include Pan-Africanists, for example, like everything having to do with Pan-Africanism supports this view that the exploitation of Africa, Latin America, and Asia are at the heart of what keeps imperial countries afloat. You know, and then in the case of Pan-Africanism, the idea is to unite all of Africa under one socialist government to cut off that, you know, source of uh, materials that flow to the imperial countries via that exploitation. So, again, the original question is, do third worldists help empire? And what are we talking about? We're talking about the U.S. isn't that bad because the Brits also practice slavery and killed Native Americans? Is that what you're saying? Because, again, the word desperate comes to mind. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm kind of shocked. Like, I'm amazed that this is what passes for Marxism, but then again, it's the U.S., so whatever. Continuing. So, America isn't England. It's America. Okay, but you're not listening to what I'm saying. You're not recognizing the decisive significance of the American Republic. Which is what, motherfucker? What is it? You've just been like stringing Jason along during this entire fucking argument. There's no substance. There's no consequence to that statement. What is this? You know, don't keep us in suspense. What is this decisive significance of the Republic? Please. I am waiting with bated breath. I'm on the edge of my seat. What is it? How does any of what you're talking about have any bearing on the topic of this discussion, please. I can't figure it out, like, at all. And I don't think Jason can either. Like, credit to Jason here. He seems to be, like, guessing at what this guy is even talking about. And it, it's like a stab in the dark of, like, maybe he means this. It's just weird. Uh, <laughs> normal people don't talk like this. If you're trying to convey some kind of coherent intelligent statement so the decisive significance lay it on me lay it on like what what are we talking about you're taking a concept of america that doesn't materially exist and saying no, i'm yeah, not well, it could have existed i'm just telling it. you where america you know made a difference in history and the difference wasn't that it introduced all of those things those things existed anyway those were there the only okay. difference, as far as the American Republic is concerned... And the American Republic does not exist without them. Yeah, so I am just lost here as to what the point is supposed to be right now. Because he's basically excusing U.S.-led genocide and slavery as like, well, the British would have done it anyway. Yeah, except here's what actually happened, is the U.S. came into existence and then it continued doing all that shit meaning it actively condoned it when it had a chance to lay down a new order which it in fact was doing it was laying down a new order it constituted a new government and an entirely new ruling system they were breaking the colonial yoke and they were doing their own thing and they decided to keep most of the oppressive practices that were going on. They just didn't want to pay fucking taxes to the king. They wanted to keep it to themselves. The rest of the system was mostly hunky-dory with them. Do you not know this for real? I'm just baffled here at like, this is the shining star, the best and brightest. 
I've heard so much talk from fucking infrared sycophants about, you know, what a badass this guy is. This is laughable. I mean, laughable. Like, this is a complete joke. Where did you get this guy from? Where did you, what, what fucking sewer did you scrape this guy out of? He knows nothing. This is just amazing. It's totally incredible to me. This is what passes as a fucking debate. You know, you can read uh, Lenin's debates with other socialists all day long. They all made, even when they were wrong, so much uh, more sense. They made better arguments. This is just shit-tier, bargain bin, fucking discounted three times, nobody wants it, trash. Which tells you something about the fucking audience that listen to this garbage. You know, if the U.S. is at the point where it's coughing up this kind of diseased, tumor-filled phlegm that we're listening to in this debate, yeah, it, it, it really probably is too late for a socialist revolution. We'll do what we can to build resistance and to build movements of people helping people. And, you know, if we bring it down, then we bring it down. But for fuck's sake, where did this guy come from? I'm just, my head is spinning. Let's go on. How do you know? Well, you see, it physically would have nowhere to be if it wasn't there. How, explain, how is that? Okay, so this guy's lost and he knows it. He's done. The fire has died down. He's desperately trying to, like, stoke the embers here to just get a little something going again. You know, when you just spent several minutes covering for fucking slavery and genocide, <laughs> and, you know, that predictably doesn't work in a discussion with a Marxist, this is what he's left with. He's got nothing but, you know, uh, yeah, 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 so explain that. Uh, give me an example on that. It's, it's just sheer desperation. The whole thing has slipped through his grasp and he's got to turn it around somehow and at least uh, clown enough that, you know, he can look amusing and entertaining enough to his audience that he can maybe try to substitute that uh, sense of being amused and entertained for the satisfaction, the actual satisfaction of having made good points. And I think, indeed, that is what he's settling for. But this is the point. You can see it right here. It's so thin. He's just like, oh, yeah, tell me that. Let me exhaust you with some minutiae on this. Uh, what are we even talking about? You know where America physically exists, Turtle Island, right? Okay. Had the native population not been forcibly removed, okay, right now there in would 2021. be no place for America. Okay, but we're speaking now in 2021. Now he's starting to turn on the condescending, but we're in the present moment. So this is a changing the subject fallacy. It does not logically follow from the discussion that they were having previously. He just lost on that point. And instead of saying, okay, good point. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, after all, we're both Marxists. So we should agree on certain fundamentals like this. Instead of doing that, now he's going to start with all kinds of crazy gymnastics to just try to score some kind of points you know, some cheap shots that have nothing to do with the substance of the discussion, but merely just getting his base riled up in the comments by just telegraphing to them, hey, start hating this guy. And it's really because he made good points and Infrared had nothing to say. I mean, when, when Jason makes a very obvious, fair, reasonable point, and then... You ask for specifics on that, that's a concession that you got nothing. That's what you have just told people who actually know what is going on, who are listening. You know, maybe your base is willing to stick by you through that nonsense because they don't understand it, but that just means your base is trash. So, yeah, maybe try harder next time, cultivating a slightly more educated audience, which if you're streaming, you should be educating them. But that, of course, also implies you have something to impart. I'm not hearing it here. Why oh, is it? In oh, oh, yeah. as long as we remove the historical context of the creation of America and everything it's done. But we're living here and now. So I that is the most pathetic cop out I maybe have ever heard in my entire life. Seriously, it is top 10, if not top three. What 
are you thinking? What are you thinking? Why don't you just agree with him? This is insane. It's insane. Assuming that you like are Marxist in any way, shape or form. Why are you fighting on this point? So we're going to now double down on the logical fallacy of changing the subject. Exactly like Jason said, wiping away all of the historical context. So let's consider that for a second. You want to engender and play to and coddle feelings of patriotism and warm feelings about the United States without considering any history. Well, then what is that patriotism rooted in? I mean, part of patriotism is knowing your country's history and feeling proud about it. Otherwise, what are you just in some Zen state where you're just living in the eternal now and like, you know, meditating on a flag and just being like, I feel patriotic. Yes. Yes. I mean, this is ridiculous. Ridiculous. So where does this patriotism come from, if not from history? And I'll tell you where it normally comes from when they teach people to be patriotic in the United States. They teach an entirely slanted history that totally omits huge portions of the oppression and atrocities that the United States has committed. That's how anybody comes out being patriotic. And this is very easy to prove. Ask the most patriotic right wingers about controversial you know, subjects relating to oppression and atrocities that the United States committed. They will either deny them outright or downplay them. I mean, this is absurd. You're calling yourself a Marxist. That's a joke. Like, seriously, don't make me laugh. I, really, we, we just we have other things to do in this life than deal with fucking buffoons like this. Who take who are, are if you're listening to this right now and you're subscribed to this absolute doofus, please click that unsubscribe button. This is amazing to me. Really, and go sit in the corner and think about what you did. Why did you listen to this moron? I mean, he's lying. Do you have no self-respect? What he's saying is obvious lies, obvious falsehoods. I mean, to, to buy into this and to go along with this, you had to pull the wool over your own eyes. Come on. I, I, my mind is blown proceeding asking you okay so as long as we completely remove the material basis for the existence of america and everything it's i'm not denying the i uh, again if it wasn't for slavery oh, you're not there denying no it, but then you're States. turning around and saying yeah well it's a different time now this is the. i'm, I'm asking you what what does it mean in 2021 now i got some two-word advice give up give it up i mean honestly this is one of the most anti-Marxist, Marxist quote, take that I've maybe ever heard. You're trying to insinuate that none of this matters in 2021. And that's what this, this guy sitting behind his nice clean desk is, this is what he came up with. Rather than just conceding obvious, incontestable points, you're going to double down triple down just keep keep on with it because you got nothing else you're just pulling this out of your ass this is very right wing just never acknowledge reality and everything will be okay i'm sorry but this is just getting worse with each successive clip oh so natives aren't marginalized and have, still have their land stolen they are but for example why would it be incompatible with you. the continuity of the republic and even the constitution for example for land reparations to be given to uh, native americans and for their rights to be up their treaties to be upholded and for them to be given more uh, land and more rights and all these self-determination why would that not be possible as long is this just some extended game of devil's advocate here because I feel like I'm listening to any basic Republican trying to make these points. Like, do you not know anything about the behavior of the United States over the course of its entire existence with respect to these issues? This is now the track he's on. Just let's pretend things have, you know, never happened the way that they actually happened. And let's pretend that the United States is an entity capable of doing 
all these hypothetical things. Why would you even consider that? Because it's not possible. This is some weird brand of magical thinking again. It's just, I'm really confused at how this is supposed to be productive in any way. This isn't constructive challenges to a third worldist perspective on imperialism, which to, for my money watching this, it's, he hasn't laid a glove on it. There's not a scratch on Jason's position in this entire thing. Which, again, even if you're going to do that among supposed, you know, friends, remember this whole thing arose out of uh, Jason saying, Caleb, I thought not only were you, you know, a comrade with similar politics, but you were a friend and you're totally lying about and smearing my position. Well, you know, this is, there's nothing friendly or constructive about it. Um, this guy is putting his, you know, quote, debate career, which is fucking sad when you think about it. Like, who cares about this shit? Who the fuck cares? We have actual problems in this world that go far beyond your fucking reputation on fucking YouTube. Fuck you. Just seriously, fuck off with that shit. You think your debate career is more important than, like, actual oppression in the real world? Just go fuck yourself. I, I cannot express high enough disdain for that, honestly. You know? So what is the point of this? Just, again, I, I can't honestly tell. Are you this ignorant and or hateful? Or are you playing devil's advocate for some, some kind of purpose? I mean, I'm just... Anyway, this is as about as, you know, they say it takes a big person to admit when they're wrong, etc. I have not seen an ounce of that. I see tiny, insecure ego throughout this entire thing. Continuing. As long as the Republic uh, stands. Okay, it also, let me say, just, it strikes me as amusing, like comical. It's just odd. <laughs> downright odd he keeps saying this word republic like it's this really you know rich deeply meaningful term just why are you stumping for this system this project which has clearly morphed into the home base of world imperialism and is actively in the process of committing every atrocity conceivable but you think that just calling it the Republic is somehow, what, restoring some dignity and pride to this whole thing? Like Jason is saying, you have to turn a blind eye to the entire reality. So he keeps saying, but what about the Republic? Like, what do you mean by that? Literally, what is your point? I am not even clear on what he is trying to argue. And every time that Jason asks him, like, what are you talking about? He just basically repeats himself. Maybe this is brilliant to him in his own mind, but believe me, it's not to the rest of the world. Continuing. Because the Republic would still be on their land, even if you, quote, gave them reparations, which, by the way, they don't want. They so want what do they want? Back. So I can... So basically what you're saying, if the Israelis throw a scrap of land to the Palestinians, then it's over. No, the decisive significance in regards to the Israel-Palestine conflict is the fact that the Palestinians are still contesting the land in the West Bank, in Gaza, and in elsewhere. And Native Americans are still doing the same thing. Right, but the difference is that the Native American population is what percentage of the United States? Oh. Whoa! <laughs> so if your genocide is successful enough, you never have to answer for it is that the argument here holy shit i'm sorry if you is this a regular thing on this guy's show because this is fascist speech right here that is a fascist set of reasoning that he just laid out he says that the difference the decisive difference between palestine and the native americans to me the decisive difference is just that they happen in different centuries or they were initiated in different centuries that's the only fucking difference i think actually that uh if the conquest of america had you know occurred in an age with iphones i mean it would look pretty much like today um that's unbelievable that's seriously amazing so the decisive difference is that there are fewer native americans around because they were murdered um, and therefore, it doesn't matter. What the fuck? 
So this is going into some dark places now. This is what happens when you can't admit defeat. It's like he's seriously turned into like spouting fascist talking points. Carrying on. Oh, because they were basically slaughtered off, their claim is what? Not as valid as Palestinians? It would be proportionate to the amount of space they need as a people. I'm just, um, this guy has no fucking clue. I'm sorry. If I was Jason, I would cut it off here. And I'd just be like, I'm sorry, I'm not going to dignify this with further responses. Goodbye. I mean, this is incredible. Uh, don't waste time on people like this, for real. We're going to go a little further, uh, just you know, as an educational example of where, if you make the mistake of continuing a conversation like this, and Jason may have had his reasons. I'm not trying to like slam him for that. But that would be the point where I would, generally speaking, be like, okay, good night, we're done. Thanks for outing yourself as a fascist. Um, Justin, I, I don't know what to, I, it's just, again, the fact that this passes as some kind of a left position, uh, it's infuriating. It's infuriating. Uh, if, if you are cheering this guy on, you're just not on the right side. He just literally was... Anyway, let, let's, let's continue. I mean, this, is, this whole discussion of the land back thing, it goes on for a while. Let's uh, hear more. Oh, so basically, there's not a lot of Native Americans left, so they don't get their land back. Well, do you know what Native Americans are demanding and what they want? Yes. What do they want? They want their land back. And so they, they want the entirety of the United States all, only is their property. How, however, and, and I can tell you this, this comes from comrade number three, the political, the, uh, the political leader of the Navajo Nation. And this is exactly what he told me, who is a socialist, by the way. Can you, okay, so what is his name? Uh, his name is... Okay, so now we go into the inevitable debate bro move of like, let me Google it right now while we're talking. You know, if you do not have background knowledge on a subject prior to the discussion you are not going to come up to speed on it sufficiently in the course of the discussion to be able to speak authoritatively on that subject. That's just a fact. But, you know, when, and when it comes to the land back issue, there are different things being said about this. Um, in some cases, it's land that was never ceded, that, uh, you know, there was never a treaty about it, and whether it was Canada or the U.S., the land was just simply taken, and it's always been contested, you know, so there's different things going on with that. I mean, this is not a, uh, I'm going to find out the truth about this issue in all of its complexities in five seconds because I fucking Googled it uh, while trying to like score points and boost my ego in front of my audience. That's not really a sound approach to forming opinions on matters of great historical import. I, and involving millions of people. So that's really ignorant. And this would be a great time to say, well, hey, I don't know that much about this issue. So I'm not going to vigorously argue against it when it's entirely possible that I would agree with the demands were I to understand them in full, etc. So this is, again, another reason debate broism, chuck it, because it encourages shit like this. It encourages know-it-allism, and it encourages taking stands on stuff you really don't know about. Comrade number three, I don't know his real name. Comrade number three, and he represents the Navajo people. Yes, actually, I, I have a thing of him on my channel, him speaking, about decolonization, etc. And he wants all of America for the Navajo? There is a question of what it is they want to do, and it's their decision to make. Not the colonizer. I'm trying to Google me. him and I can't find him. So you're not you... going to find anything on a Google. He doesn't have a social media. So how do you know he represents the whole Navajo people and he's their actual representative? Because I've I've talked to him and I've talked to his people. You've talked to every Navajo, or you've talked. This is the most ignorant shit right here. For the sake of a debate, this guy is willing to take a complex issue representing centuries of oppression and atrocities. And is willing to just, no, 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 I'm just trying to understand it. No, you're not trying to understand it. You're just trying to game it 
and manipulate it for the sake of this conversation so you can like think that you chalked up a win or so that your audience thinks that. Nobody is walking away from this clearer. All you're doing is confounding the issue and not actually making a concerted effort to understand anything. Of course you're not. That's what debate broism is all about. It's about digging into a position and just using any kind of treachery you can imagine to, you know, it's like capture the flag just with some kind of a point. There's nothing about what is right or what we should be doing. I, I haven't really heard anything conceded in the sense that it actually changed the course of the discussion. Jason should be leading this conversation because he has been right and has, well, what was that definition again? All you can do is weigh the substantive points from each side and the willingness of each side to confront or address said points. Well, I hear Jason holding his own. I hear the other guy just, you know, throwing out all kinds of random nonsense about it. It's, there's, there's nothing here. It's, it's just offensive, really. To no, I've not talked to everyone. Because there are official right. organizations that okay, represent... Okay, so basically you're, you're just going to claim he doesn't exist. I don't, know who you're talking, exist. I don't know who you're talking about. Okay. I'm, there, I'm saying there you are, mean, you, you there are official representatives of indigenous organizations and people and reservations and tribes. There are official tribes that are registered and recognized by the U.S. government. And oh, well, it's recognized by the U.S. government because that's someone you can trust. Well, who are you going to trust then? Otherwise, you're just dealing with individuals. The people themselves. Yeah, really, this is not a super hard concept. You've got a, quote, Marxist here being like, well, the U.S. government recognizes them. They couldn't be handpicked puppets. After all, that's not the literal definition of neocolonialism, right? Snap out of it. Like, honestly, this guy apparently has people in like a trance. I have yet to hear a single good point here. He's like literally telling you to trust the U.S. government when it comes to dealing with questions about Native American sovereignty. Think about that for a second. Think about it. And then think about how much his other opinions are worth. Which people? The Native Americans themselves. But that's the issue with individuals, right? Some, many individuals can say, well, we support Trump. Many individuals can say... Well, yep. we support this, we support that. So I don't support the ones that... How do you know who speaks for all indigenous people? No one person does. But that is the general consensus is, yes, they do want their land back. And even now, we've gone... Okay, what, but hold on. What is their land? What so the way in which Infrared is mocking and belittling the concept that Native Americans would want their land back would want reparations and justice for the centuries of atrocities and oppression committed against them by the U.S. government. The way that he is approaching this smugly with like, well, how this is indistinguishable from any right winger. I mean, point what what is the difference? Anyone. Can anyone do it? What's the difference? Say it in the comments. What land do they want back? Do they Even want the like, half of the world? They want the entirety of seaboard to seaboard United States. Some of them, yes. To do what with? Historically speaking, they didn't uh, have all of that land. They didn't even use all of that land. A thousand dollars, says this guy, has literally no idea what he is spouting off about right now. Like, zero idea. Don't talk about things you don't know anything about. I mean... You know, in this age of Trump and MAGA, you can get followers by just your stubborn refusal to back down in the face of being wrong. But this is not something anyone calling themselves a Marxist should tolerate even for a microsecond. This is garbage. Go join the Republican Party. That is where your views belong. And please keep Marx out of it. It doesn't even make any sense. Funny, you know, I, uh, I have studied that, indigenous. That is, that is an and rand. That is an. That's literally what and rand. They said. literally did not. I'm not saying they didn't exploit the land. I'm saying that they literally had no. It wasn't a sacred grounds for that. They didn't even operate in all of America, seaboard to seaboard. That's what I'm trying to say. 
That's funny because I've had Zionists say the same thing about Palestine. Yeah, honestly, this is such trash. If this guy wasn't out there like calling himself a Marxist, I'd just be like, Jason, why are you debating this like random toad that really does not deserve anyone's attention? But I guess it just speaks to the gullibility and willingness to indulge in reactionary views in the U.S. that this guy has even found an audience. What can I say? It's disgusting. Like, it's repellent. But we have to resist it, and we have to take it down wherever we can. Okay. Well, they weren't using all of it, so therefore the colonization is okay. Well, we're not saying it's okay, but we're saying that they didn't use all of it. That, but we're that, not saying it's okay. That doesn't make any sense, okay? I'm trying That's to tell your argument, you that. Not mine. Yeah, that was his argument, and it didn't make any sense. And for once, I agree. Give this guy a point. Okay, historically speaking, you can actually map historical and ancestral lands and? of various different indigenous so tribes. So therefore, it's okay to, to steal some of the land. No, that happened in the past. I feel like I'm in a washing machine because this thing just keeps going around and around. I mean, any time this guy gets cornered, it's, that happened in the past, this is the present. That is about as unmarxist and unhistorically materialist as you can possibly get. You know, I said it before, I will just say it again for reinforcement. You cannot have productive conversations in this format. Discussions like this just cannot really be fruitful in this context. In a situation which is entirely, you know, game oriented about people trying to win points for, quote, their side, rather than actually learning and assimilating new knowledge and insights, it's literally geared towards the exact opposite, just digging in and making your position more and more resistant to any attempt to change it. That's really the opposite of education, learning, or constructive discourse. This is really destructive. It leaves people more divided and the whole thing is trash and we're now just basically tossing around fascist talking points rather than just fucking conceding something is this how it happens is this like how the contrarian like shift to the right happens is just like somebody made me feel bad because they pointed out that my position wasn't you know factually accurate or didn't hold up under scrutiny but i'm just gonna dig in and just go right and right and right is that how it happens? Like, because this is enormously petty. And again, it's just such an affront to the centuries of suffering and oppression to be like debated in this offhand, abstract, just totally callous way. The world does not need more of this. So yeah, anyone interested in the land back issue or indigenous rights in the Americas, Let's get some resources going on that, but debate bros pulling shit off of Wikipedia in real time to score points with their audience of sycophantic fanboys, this is not it. So, it happened a long time ago, therefore yeah. it doesn't count. Well, what, do you, what would it mean for it to count? Was that a sentence that was like a part of this discussion? What would it mean for it to count? This is just... Again, there's nothing remotely constructive about trying to find a sensible position and an informed position on this issue, which if you're not striving for a sensible and informed position on historical questions pertaining to the development of capitalism, imperialism, and the genocide and atrocities that it commits and how to, well, overturn that order which would necessarily involve setting some of those injustices right to the extent that that is possible here on Earth. If you're not doing that, you're not actually an ally of this movement. And that's what I see happening, is not that. I'm, j I'm really just appalled. Um, I'm not Native American myself, but Jason's point is we need to listen to them because they're the people, they are the victims. And the point is having a dialogue and a discussion about what went wrong. And 
I, I hear fascism coming from this guy. That's what I hear. And this is, it's honestly pretty hard to do this video because every time this guy opens his mouth, it is in service of minimizing massive atrocities. The land was stolen. Okay, well, no, no, no amount of saying. Since we're ago, since we're, we're talking different. about the past and it's it, the weight of the past matters so much. Where do you currently live? I currently live in Canada. So why don't you pack your bags, give your land to indigenous people? Okay. What you're looking at is complete bankruptcy of thought. What he just said could have come out of the mouth of any standard run-of-the-mill U.S. MAGA reactionary. That's a Fox News talking point. It is as brain-dead as it gets. He's not even trying, or maybe this is him trying, if it's him trying, either try harder or give up, because holy Jesus, who does this go over with but extreme reactionaries? You just literally gave the you know, it's like, oh, if you don't like it, move to Russia. Or in this case, you know, engage in some personal solution that you're not going to do that wouldn't fix the problem anyway. It's like when people uh, say that, you know, there should be immigration reform and that the immigration system is oppressive in the United States and it's designed to create, uh, you know, a subclass of extremely precarious workers who fear for their deportation and they put up with lower labor standards as a result because they can't go to authorities and they're afraid of police or ICE agents, you know, arresting them, deporting them, splitting up their family, whatever. And, you know, then people are like, oh, yeah, well, why don't you take the front door off your house? This is not intelligent. I mean, this is just fucking stupidity. And again, why are we taking this guy seriously as a Marxist? Anyone? Anyone. You could join a Ben Shapiro chat group and get the same quality of insight as you're getting right here from this, you know, supposed member of the vanguard. This guy's an influential thought shaper. This entire discussion, I mean... I have avoided this topic for a while because, like I said, I saw a clip of this guy a while ago I know that his popularity shot way up in part off of this tough guy act, calling everybody a little bitch and whatever else. And I was like, great. So some toxic asshole is on the scene making waves. Anyway, here you are. This is who people have invited into their ideological homes. Are you proud of yourself? How did you fall for this? You, anyone who's listening to this, who is a fan of this fucking clown. How did you fall for it? How did you get suckered in? And if you think this is Marxism, you are 100% wrong. Unless, again, Ben Shapiro is some kind of Marxist, and I just was unaware of it. Let's get back to Jason in the video. First of all, with, with what money? And by the way, I don't own any land. You don't have a house? I, I, no, I live in a rented apartment. So give your, start giving your, or share your apartment at least with homeless indigenous people. So again, literally, this is from the same category of response as, oh, you're a socialist? Why don't you give your money away? It, it's the exact same thing. Oh, so very right wing argument. You Why? think that on an individual level that I can make any kind of a difference in that way. But I'm well, asking you, what well, are the contemporary like so, much, so what? The, the past doesn't count? Move to Cuba. So the past I'm doesn't it count? Does count. I'm saying it does count. So it if it matter. counts, stop occupying their land now and leave. Well, if it can't, if you like socialism, move to Cuba. But it's okay. What are the, well, for me, the implications of socialism are building socialism here. So why would I move to Cuba? If the implications of there. socialism you for you are giving all of the native people their land it's back. It's a nonsense argument. So, but the implications of socialism no, to you are giving it's, all it's, indigenous it's people the land back. Argument. So what are the I implications? Do, I can't give their land back. I don't have any land. You can give I your... I can't give back something I don't... You can I give... I don't own the apartment. You can give your belongings and you can give your... My belongings... They don't want my belongings. They want their land. I don't have any land to but give you're back. But you are physically living yes, in an apartment on stolen land. Ex 
Yes. You're living on stolen and I land. Believe that this land. So do you, do you remember the clip of that settler who was saying if it wasn't if it's not going to be me who takes the house, it's going to be someone else? That's kind of how you're being right no, now. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. That's not the argument I'm making. I never said. It that. sounds never a lot like the close. argument. So what do you think? Is this a serious person who is really interested in involving oppressed people in the construction of socialism in the U.S. in actually hearing out people? from a different background that maybe he doesn't understand? No, of course not. I mean, again, that this is passing for anything resembling socialism is a travesty. And again, everyone supporting this person, please stop. Because listen to what he is saying. This is indistinguishable from Republican talking points. He is mocking the entire concept of even trying to understand what is being said here. Uh, there are grievances against the United States. He's not interested in that because it's the Republic. You know, this is empty. And you can see it's starting to deteriorate into shouting. And we're, you know, I'd say now five or ten minutes into the point where he had nothing else to say. So he's just basically throwing nonsense points at Jason to just distract from that fact. That's all I see happening. But you're making no, 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 absolutely not. Because I don't, de I don't, I don't deny that I'm on occupied land and it should change. How, how is that going this to is, change? This is nonsense. It's like saying, if you don't like a capitalist economy, then leave. No, it's because, the same argument. No, I could easily no, it's respond a to that. Nonsense argument. The, it's not the same argument. I could easily respond to that am, argument by the saying land that is still stolen. But but you're, but, you're but if Marx is say that the basis of socialism is in capitalism, it's not the same argument because socialism you're comes for from capitalism. Gymnastics to get out of the fact that you are on stolen land, just as I am, and it should be returned to those people. And they can I, 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 I don't believe that's the contemporary implication is that they want all of America. You're really raising the no, bar. No, no, I think you're Some really do. trivializing Some the do. ongoing injustices against indigenous no. people. All right, I'm done. I'm done listening to this shit. You can see that he knows exactly what you can see the little smirk on his face. You know that he is just doing a little bit of humorous projection of exactly what he's doing onto Jason by saying, you're trivializing, blah, blah, blah. And he's smirking while he says it. He doesn't give a shit. This person is not a socialist. Everyone following him, the joke is on you. He is laughing at you. He isn't sincere in the slightest. You can see he's literally smirking while he says what he just said. So I'm done. This video is almost at two hours anyway. I got a lot of other videos to make. And I, I think you get the point by now anyway. Um, you got to do a lot better than this. It really, you know, for anyone swayed by the limited breakdown I did here, um, seriously, go think about what suckered you into this because you got a lot more work to do, like a lot in terms of figuring out what being a Marxist in the U S today is about and falling for fascism definitely isn't it. We're going to leave it there. Thanks for listening. Thanks to the current patrons whose names are on the screen. If you'd like to support on Patreon, it's patreon.com slash socialism for all. You can sign up for as little as $2 a month. All of those donations are encouraging and materially helpful. So thank you. If you want to support without a donation, just liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, all of that helps to boost the channel. Whatever it is you do in your community and online, to challenge capitalism and to spread the conversation about socialism. Thanks for doing it. Join an org if there is a good one in your area, and we will catch you in the next video.